no. Oh, it's so frustrating. I can't do this. I don't understand. How can I ever pass this class? Now, these are some of the reactions that I get from my students when they take not just my class, okay, don't get me wrong, but any physics class. So how can we overcome the frustration of studying physics? Let's look at it. You know, first of all, we need to understand what physics is. Physics is the most basic science of all. It is actually understanding what the universe is. Now, in my words, I would say, physics is a science of measurement, measuring everything that you can, like length, mass, time, force, density, whatever you can measure. In fact, physics is just a mathematical analysis of the universe. So yes, there's a lot of math that comes in, but it's not just math. It's a logic coupled with math that explains the working of the universe. Now that's what makes it tough, but it could be very interesting. And uh, if you know how to study the subject, so I'm just gonna tell you a few tips to uh, make your life a little bit easier. But remember, there is nothing like practicing solving problems. You've got to have a lot of practice. So that's nothing, you know, that replaces effort and time and practice in working out problems. So here Number we go. one, when you get into the physics lecture hall, shut the world out. I mean it, shut the world out. Just, just keep those cell phones away. Keep those laptops away. I use a lot of electronics myself, but when you are in the lecture hall, you got to have your complete mind and focus on the lecture. You got to keep all those distractions away. Now, you can enjoy the course. It's a very enjoyable course, especially the way that I teach it. I know, yep, yep, but that's how I teach it. But you got to be focused in order to understand. That's tip number one. Tip number two, you got to take notes. And when you take notes, that's an entirely different topic. You know, taking notes, the art of taking notes, is so important and few people know how to do that. But just remember, you got to be organized. You got to highlight the terms and concepts in physics. Let me give you an example. Velocity is a term. Speed is another term. So when we talk about speed, you got to really try to understand what speed is. Like an example. Distance is different from displacement. Displacement is the straight line path from one point to the other. Distance is the way you take to go from one point to the other. So when you drive from home to school, you're not driving straight all the way. So if you measure the distance, well, I said it, if you measure the whole length of the path, you get the distance. But the straight line distance as the arrow flies, so to say, would be the displacement. So understand uh, the terms and the concepts and identify terms and quantities in the equations, right? Number three, I've heard this a million times. So when you work out the problems, it's so easy to understand, but when I try to work it on my own, I don't get it so easy. Yeah, that's right. That's how it was when I was a student, okay? It's not gonna come easy. But now what should you do? You take a question and you start thinking about how to work it out. Do you go straight to the equation? No, you don't. You plan your approach. How do you plan your approach? You read the question. What is it talking about? What are the given quantities? What are you asked to find? You know, you think about it. Now, thinking is very important. And once you think about it, 
you try to work out the problems independently now using the equations. Have you heard of critical thinking? I'm sure you have. Critical thinking. Think outside the box. We say it, but when it comes to it, it's not easy to do it. So practice, practice, practice. Number five. And then you have, you know, I tell my students, it's not the W-H-A-T, not the what, but the why, W-H-Y. That's very important. It's not, physics is not assimilation of facts. It's not memorization. Well, all that you need a little bit, but it's, yeah, understanding. It's understanding the stuff. What are we talking about? Understand. So when we talk about acceleration due to gravity, immediately students will go, it's negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay. Do you know why it's negative? Well, because it's downwards. Why is the unit meter per second squared? Oh, because acceleration is change in velocity by time. So velocity is in meter per second, and then time is in second. So you divide meter per second again by second, you get meter per second squared. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. You got to understand how these things come in. So understand the why of the concept. Point number five is when you go to the physics lab, uh, you, of course, work in groups. And so you're like, OK, now it's party time. It is not. The lab is the place where you tie your learning in the lecture hall to your doing. So from what you do, you need to try to tie it back to what you were taught. And for that, you have to make an effort. You have to say, oh, this is what he was talking about. Or, this is what it means. So you have to try to understand what you're doing in the lab without just going through the motions. You know, try to think and try to connect it to the, the learning. It's uh, not an attitude of, mm, lab carries 25% of the grade, so do this for an easy grade. No, it is not. It is trying to understand what you were taught. And uh, finally, and, uh, finally, I want to leave you with this most important tip, which comes to when you take exams. When you take exams, uh, well, no matter how many times I've said it, the previous night is not the night when you just forgo sleep and study. No, you got to get a good night's rest before the exam. Got to have a clear mind. That means you got to do the learning before that. Don't keep it till the night before. Reviewing happens the night before, but you got to get enough sleep. And then when you come into the exam hall, very important, really important. You do not try to do question number one first and then question number two no you go through the question paper run through it and then you look at it and so oh i know question number five do number five first because you know that you've seen it you know how to work that out you know what happens your level of confidence goes up and then go to the next question that you are a little bit sure of maybe number seven so follow the process until you come to questions that you do not have any idea about it's okay because by this time uh, you have done what you can now spend some time rack your brains think about that question where you have seemed to have hit a roadblock okay and try your best but you know on the other hand if you just start with question one and let's say that's something that you do not know, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get frustrated. Now you're losing time. And so now you can't think anymore. You are so frustrated that when you get to question number five that you actually know, you forget everything. How many times is it that in, in an exam hall you say, I forgot everything that I studied. This is one of the reasons. So. Do the easier questions first, the ones that are easy for you, and then follow that process until you get to those tough ones. I hope, that, you know, so parents want to do the best for you. So it doesn't matter whether you come a, a tribe or a clan, which is completely educated. No, we did struggle for money when we were children. 
We had enough, just enough. And sometimes you may not even have that. It's okay. But you don't want you by your persistence and your grit can change generations to come. And I get passionate when I talk about this because it's, it's really important that somebody steps up and changes. And I, by the mercy of God, I could do it. You know, I just stepped up and it was, it was not easy. It was so frustrating, but I did it. And then my brother went to college. My sister went to college. Our children all go to college. Oh, who took the first step? Of course, it was my parents who wanted us to study, who told us to study every single day. That's all they could do. And then I had to get up and come up and through the frustration fight and get to the place where I said I would go to college and do it. So you do it. You can. If somebody told you you cannot, they were lying. You can do it if you have the grit and the confidence. And I'm in this with you to help you get to the place where you want to be. Thank you.